Hey, I'd like to show you my Emacs workflow. I just launched Emacs. It's in this scratch buffer. I can do whatever. I usually go to a project I want to work in. Uh, to do this, I hit Command Shift P. I have a list of uh, repositories. I can start typing or just navigating here and fuzzy matching works here. So I can start typing the beginning and maybe the end of my uh, project folder. And here are some candidates. I want to work on my blog, rahim.org. So I just selected, hit enter, and I have a Majid status window. Majid or Magit is an interface to Git within Emacs. So here I can see some unstaged changes, quite a lot of them and maybe previous commits. And as you can see, this is opened in a second pane or panel, or in Emacs terms, the second window. I still have the scratch window at the top and I can go there by hitting Command O. And just like in a browser, I can close it with Command W or I can go here and close this one. Or if I want, only to have this one, I can hit Command Shift W. This essentially closes all other windows, but this. Now I'm inside the project and I can navigate to a file within this project by hitting Command P and fuzzy matching works again. So maybe I want to work on, uh, I don't know, my main org file for this blog. I have a Emacs cast episode about this setup. I use Hugo, which is a static website generator to uh, create my blog, but I, I write the blog, uh, all the posts within a single org file, and I use uh, an Emacs extension called OX Hugo. So whenever I edit anything in this file, a set of markdown files and therefore HTML files are created. So uh, this is a really nice interface to writing my blog. So let's say I want to continue writing some, some of uh, the entries. These headings are the categories on my blog. And if I expand with shift tab, I see I have a few posts within different categories. And most of them have this done label and done means published. But this last one has to do, it, this means it's a draft. Uh, so it's one, it won't be published even if I commit changes. So let me expand this uh, and start doing something here. But I want to focus on this particular post. Uh, I can hit command shift down. Sorry, command control down. And this will focus on this particular subtree. So I don't have access to all the other posts uh, at the moment. This is the only thing in my in my window, in my buffer. So to actually see the changes, I have to run the Hugo server. I can do it within any terminal, or I can run the terminal in Emacs and do it here. To do this, I hit command equals, and I have a small pop-up terminal at the bottom. This is my regular bash, so whatever I have set up works here. And I have set up a command called hug, an alias, that runs um, the server at the local host 1313. So if I switch to my web browser, um, I can see I have this website now running at localhost. I don't need this terminal anymore. I can hide it with the same key and it's actually still there. I can always go back, it's in the same state. So let me try to edit something here. So something new. And as soon as I hit save, the window on the right updates and redirects to the page that I just edited. So I can keep going and it's, it's quite fast. Let me expand this file back by hitting command control up. So I have the full file again. As you can see, I don't have line numbers on the left. That's because the only reason I would need line numbers is when I want to go to a particular line and to do it, I can just hit command L and enter a line number. So maybe I want to go to line 14 and I'm there. So let's say I did that. Uh, maybe then I went to some other place by searching for it. And just like in any other editor, I can hit command F and start writing something. So maybe 
I wanted to go to this protect line. Another way to jump somewhere within the screen is if I see some place and I just want to go there, I can of course search or I can use AV. That's a really nice package I just started using. To activate it, I hit command semicolon. And now I just enter any character that I want to go to that I see on the screen. So maybe I want to go to this experiments. So I can just start maybe X. And now I'm in the state where AV found multiple instances of X on the screen. As you can see, they are all selected by these red uh, labels. I want to go here because this is what I was looking at. And I just have to hit the corresponding key and it says S, so I hit S and I'm there. This might sound cumbersome and it did to me at first because, well, I have to hit some random letters, but it turns out it's really fast. So let's say I was doing this for a while. I was jumping around, uh, searching, going places with lines and with AV, etc. And now I just want to track back. I want to go back to the place or places that I've been to. I can of course search again if I remember that, or I can hit command comma, and this will jump me to the previous place I've been to before jumping somewhere forward. And I can keep going, and this way I'll get back to that place that I started in. And comma might not make sense, but it makes sense to me because on the keyboard comma is the same key as the less than sign, and less than looks like a left arrow, kind of go back. So correspondingly, command dot or command period, period is the same button as the more than key, and that looks like a right arrow. I can go forward in time, forward in this series of jumps. Let's say I want to switch to some other file. I can, of course, hit command P again and start typing. Or maybe I don't remember what file exactly I'm looking for, but I remember what I'm looking for, some text. Just like you could search within a file with command F, you can search within the whole project with command shift F. And shift makes sense because it's kind of the next level thing. So it's the next level search. So I can just hit command shift F and start typing. So maybe I was looking for some styles for uh, margin top. And that's probably the one I'm looking for is, uh, let's say this one. Maybe try again and go to some other file. Just like I could go back within a file with command comma, I can go back to previous buffers or previous files basically with command shift comma and go forward with command shift dot. And I try to be consistent in my config so that shift always moves the command to the next level. So if it was a file-based search with shift, it's project-based search. If it was file-based jump with shift, it's window-based jump. Just like in a browser, I can hit command T and this will kind of open a new tab, which actually opens a new window in Emacs terms. And I can go between those windows with command O, which just ne goes to the next window. Or if I have them vertically uh, split like here, I can use the same command as in iTerm, which is uh, command and square brackets to go left and right correspondingly. I can open more windows and go between them like this. And I can close them with command W. And if I want a horizontal split, I can hit command shift T. Sometimes I want to edit a particular region of the text or maybe code in another buffer just to feel more comfortable. So I can launch a command called edit indirect. A new window opens up and the code that I selected is in this window. So I can do something here, uh, something else. This is not CSS, but whatever. And if I hit command C, uh, sorry, control CC, this will close the window, save that, and update the file I was working in. As you can see, this new line appeared here. Sometimes, often in code, I have to select something and expand this selection. So maybe I want to select this word, NL. I can hit command 
single quote. And if I keep hitting it, it will expand to the next logical boundary. So within this string, it will expand to the next file name. And then the whole string within quotes. And then if I hit again, the whole string with the quotes. And then maybe those brackets. And then this thing. And then the whole uh, block of code. And if I want to go back to narrow down, I do it with shift. So command shift. I can add a new line from anywhere by hitting command enter or a new line above with command shift enter. I can join lines by command J or if I select the whole bunch of lines, I can join them all with command J. I can quickly uppercase and lowercase by hitting uh, alt U and alt L. So maybe I want this margin top to be uppercase. Oh no, I want it lowercase. And I can capitalize words by hitting Alt C. And this actually moves the cursor to the next word. So if I keep doing it, I will capitalize more and more words. If I want to replace something that I see on the screen, there are multiple ways I can go. One is multiple cursors. So I if I have this border selected, I can hit Command D to select another instance of the same word. And now I have two cursors. And I can just start typing something maybe bottom instead of top. Another way to replace something that I see on the screen is with visual replace. I can hit command R and start typing something. So let's say I wanna replace the same border with something. It highlights two matches. I hit enter and I do something else. So maybe, I don't know, loop. And it actually shows you what it was before and then an arrow and what it will be after I hit enter. So now, I have replaced border with loop in all the instances. To see the list of open files and buffers, I hit command B. And again, I can fuzzy search here and quickly go back to my blog org file. And here I have just some English text. It seems to be correct. So there are no highlights, but if I were to make a mistake, so if I say stayed instead of state, it highlights it, uh, underlines it actually. And I can quickly fix it by hitting command backslash. There are candidates at the top and I quickly hit a button to replace this word with some other word. Usually the most obvious correction is the first one. So it's zero state and I hit zero and it changes. I can also define this word. Let's say I don't remember what state means. I can hit alt and backslash and it takes a bit because it connects to the internet and tries to find the, all the definitions of this word. And then it shows them here at the bottom. Sometimes I'm somewhere else doing something else and I want to quickly capture an idea for maybe my blog or maybe a note. There are capture templates in org mode and I bind them to control C C and I have a multiple here. I can quickly add a new comic at my blog or a new blog post or a note or a journal entry. So let's say I want to add a new blog post. I hit B here. It asks for a title, so maybe new post. And it again opens this temporary buffer where I can edit and add stuff and then hit Control CC and it will add it to the blog file. So uh, this new idea and Control CC. It says it wrote the blog org. So if I go to this blog org again, at the bottom I see this is a new to-do uh, with, the, with the stuff that I put in. My config is also an org file. I can quickly go there by hitting escape, escape C. And all the stuff that uh, makes this Emacs behave like this is described in this document. Of course, it won't be a complete Emacs workflow without Majit or Magit. To open the Majit status window, I hit command G, and this is the same status window that you saw when I switched to a new project. So let me close other windows, and I can see some untracked files and unstaged changes and commits that I made that, that weren't uh, pushed to the origin yet. So I'm inside my project for my configuration files, and I have this org file modified. If I hit tab on its name, I can see all the changes in this file and I can stage the whole file by hitting S on its name or I can stage a chunk of this file. Here, 
I changed one line and I want to stage this line, so I hit S on it. And now I have a new section in my status, so let me close this org. I have the stage changes, and I only have one change here, just this one single line replaced. So let me commit this change. I hit CC, and now I have all the changes on the left, and on the right I can write my commit message. So replace swiper with... As you can see, I have some auto-completion enabled. So if I accept this change, I just hit enter. And from here, I can hit command CC, and this will commit the change. So now I have two unmerged commits, and I can see the details of it by hitting enter on its name. Here I can see all the changes and author and dates and etc. Of course, this is just the tip of the iceberg as for what my Git can do. It seems to be covering all of the features of Git and providing this nice interface to it. But for the most part, I of course just commit and push. That's it. There are more things in this config. I'm trying to actually delete things from this config from time to time, make it as slim as possible. Uh, but yeah, if there are more updates in the future, I'll keep you posted. Thank you.